Yes. If it was on my one of the big armor, it might be. Say what?
we, we do uh, limit those to three minutes. But Don, come on. Thank you. Glad to be back. The, uh, the post Young Osprey Initiative, we're doing the litter work in the city. So this is kind of, we feel a good update, let you know what we're up to um, and get some feedback. We're, we're not. We're not. Sorry, Don. That's me. I probably quit talking. Yeah, if you're watching it um, on the phone, make sure you're muted. If that helps. All right. I think God, I sound like such a hasty. <laughs> yeah, my poor, that was bad. My poor wife. Um, anyhow, this is, I guess, over a year now we've, we've worked in Decatur. Glad to be part of what we're doing. Um, we're going to go kind of fast tonight. Always open for more questions if anybody have any, had any things. But um, yeah, the first year was kind of a test, and now we've been implementing the program, and we're seeing, we think we're seeing results you know, as we go forward. So we're going to jump right into it, and I, I gave you all also a map. There's a few extra ones, just kind of our process doing the first pass cleanup, and that's what we've done so far. We also, like after a big rain, we'll go back to Wilson Morgan. We know that's a critical spot. Also, the Cemetery Lake, you know, we, we try to stay ahead of it, so it might slow us down in other areas, but we'll, we'll wrap up talking about this, this map a little bit. So, um, people haven't heard our spiel, it's all about the water. I'm fortunate, I'm from South Louisiana, grew up with water. It's kind of neat to be in a Decatur that's almost surrounded by water with a lot of water in the middle of it. And as our environmental interest goes, we feel like saving that water and bringing our, you know, having the kids a place to come to our local water is gonna help them change their mindset about environmental issues around. So protect your water, then you start protecting the streets and we change the mindset. So go ahead, Miss Stephanie. So these are our current sites uh, where we are. We have two litter getters in the water. Uh, now and we're here to actually install some boom as we have identified some of the litter spots in the cemetery lake And so as we climb into it um, But our active sites are dry branch and then we're at at, uh, at Wilson Morgan also in Clark spring there so Concentrating on two we thought two focal points the traps kind of become that that point uh, and we tried the other spots So that's where we are today. Go ahead Ms. step and so these are the results today. This was our presentation when the ice storm hit. So we haven't quite updated the numbers, but uh, what we really like to see, so what we concentrate essentially is on floating litter. We do keep the debris separate, tires, refrigerators, if we find something like that, but we think that kind of skews the data. And so if you look at between the litter getters and the tactical cleanups, we were at, uh, that number's off, but you know, 2,700 cubic feet, that's dumpsters. A floating litter. Think about, you know, almost uh, 7,200 pounds of styrofoam, and I'll show you the data how we verify that, but been a pretty good amount of work here. Um, and what we're starting to see now with our data, we're starting to get to the newer litter, which means we're some of that old legacy litter getting it out the way too. So we go to the next one. So that's our big numbers. You know, we can put that in a report if anybody needs to see it. Um, so this is site specific. So these are each of the, uh, I think this is our, this is our one pass. The one pass is critical. Everybody, what we've learned, we've been doing this for five years now, is the, um, everybody really wants to concentrate on litter traps. And litter traps are really, when they're working, should be your secondary tool. Um, so we've moved into the one pass, catch it upstream first. If we miss it in the one pass, we have a lot of entrance points, then we hope the traps catch it. And then we place the traps smartly to think that you know, we can catch it. If it does miss it, it creates an area where we can still get it before it goes downstream. And I think the best example of anybody downstream of Clark Spring from Wilson Morgan, between the litter getter, the upstream work, and then keeping the lake clean, we have not, there's really very litter, a little bit of litter downstream. A little bit's coming off of some of the roads, but some of the folks we've talked to downstream have been pretty impressed, you know, just with the litter going away. So been pretty so then numbers this is the one pass critical part of what we do and that's foot by foot and that's what this map is if you look at the map what we do is we start upstream if you sit downstream you're just waiting for it to come to you so we actually start upstream and work our way downstream of course the upper areas it's hip boots and waders 
then we'll get to kayaks and eventually we might get to bigger boats. So it's just working our way down as we go, attacking the source. That's the first pass ever on those stretch, stretches of the creeks. And so now what's neat about it is what may have taken, you know, two people a day to do a zone, now that if we stay on it, and now we're gonna start the maintenance schedule of the one passes, then you might be able to do it in an hour. And so that's another neat, you know, a, a way of staying ahead of the litter. So you can go ahead. So this is what's really neat. And this is, we didn't have you guys before, now that we're getting a data pool. Um, what we want to start understanding is what the litter is. The, you know, if it's just counting bags of litter, which is great. We love our volunteers, whatever it takes, get out there and get the litter. But we want to start breaking this down so potentially we can start thinking about upstream solutions, awareness solutions before it ever becomes litter. So if you look at some of these, these are our major ETAP. This is, this is our results from Decatur. This isn't blended from our other cities that we're working in. So 55% plastic, 22% styrofoam. We kind of all know that, but now we can actually put numbers on that. Um, then as we get into the condition, this is another telling point, the intact versus partially versus degraded. What this is telling us, it's a pretty active litter situation. Well, a lot of our water is right next to roads, and that's where a ton of our litter is coming from. So this is kind of, again, not outside the norm, but wherever we're working, we start seeing the degraded kind of go away some of this data from when we originally started working, some of that degraded was removed, and now it's looking like pretty much active, active litter. And then our last one, we think because it's so critical, we like to break down the plastic and the styrofoam, uh, since it's such a huge part of the litter load. And so as you can see, we actually break out water bottles versus soft drink bottles. That tells a different story. Um, we're kind of nerds about litter. We'll make some of y'all, y'all get to be nerds too if you want. But the, um, you know, if you got a, you, if you got a bunch of water bottles and Gatorade bottles, what are you probably next to? Ball fields. You know, you're at your ball fields. If you're finding a bunch of beer cans, you're probably not at a daycare. You know, and so it starts giving you some ideas. Um, we find a lot of times with the beer cans, depends on how they're clustered. If we find like seven, you know, it looks like somebody sat there and drank a few. It might be one of these fishing spots that people like to sit at and fish. And again, there's some nice ways of saying, folks, we're trying to keep this. Let's enjoy this fishing spot. Um, so it highlights some of that. So that's, we take this down to another level if you look at the next slide. So this is when it really starts getting interesting. So here's our breakdown of styrofoam cups. National branding doesn't necessarily tell the story, but if you look at your styrofoam cups, you start seeing some of your um, specific fast food places or, or gas stations in that watershed. So this is another critical, it's not meant to be a hammer, you know, but it's meant to start understanding again where this litter's coming from. We may have a, a fast food place and we just say, we need a few more trash cans. You know, we, what can we do to help y'all help us and most people understand now that we can be specific. So these are the kind of things, this is, we're kind of throwing it out today. Um, but if we get and, and want to talk some more about this, we can come up with some strategies. And then a really neat part, these are more your national brands, but this is also, this is probably better, a better market share analysis because these are national brands. I can buy a Coca-Cola in New Jersey and drop it here and that's not going to tell you anything. But there's probably not eight Chick-fil-A's, and that's just their name. I mean, there's probably not eight Chick-fil-A's in Decatur, you know. And so they're also, one of the deals they're dealing with is their packaging is styrofoam. So while McDonald's may have a certain percentage of the litter, the fact is, Chick-fil-A is 100% styrofoam in their to-go cups, where McDonald's is a blend. Their coffee cups may be styrofoam. So that's where some of that can still be skewed. It's not perfect data, but you can start getting an understanding of, um, of the data that comes out. Every time we clean out a trap, we do what's called the ETAP, Escape Trash Assessment Protocol. We break that material down. Um, so every time we clean a litter gear out, it gets a full ETAP, and we do tactical cleanups we will do a 10% representative portion. So we get 10 bags, we do one bag of, of ETAP. So pretty neat stuff. Again, this is Decatur specific. Take all this with a grain of salt. It's not a smoking gun. A lot of people think this is like just some acute information, but it can start building a strategy where we're seeing some of the clients and some of our other areas going to that client, they may be interested in installing some of the interceptors that we have in Decatur. And so now if you can go to that gas station 
you know, we know their cups are coming. If you, if you would put in three of these, we kind of would be pleased as a city for doing your part. So that's where this information is meant to be used for. So the next one. So our goals for Q1 coming up, we're a little past, you know, we're ending Q1, is we're almost through with our one pass. We're next, uh, Betty Rye is our next one. We're going to get started on Betty Rye. Um, and we're going to start top to bottom. I don't think some of the upper branches have ever been cleaned, so we're pretty excited about getting in there. And it has this nice natural pond at the bottom of it that we feel really good about what we're going to get, uh, get done. And, and Betty Rye, we're scouting some this afternoon. And depending on the condition of the cemetery lake, we're going to either start on Betty Rye tomorrow or get a tactical plan for Betty Rye's our next our branch to get. So we're doing that. We'd like to add, I want to give Mr. Pruitt, we've had a couple of detention ponds that he referenced that are really outside of our scope, but we think as we're wrapping up, we feel like we're a little bit ahead of schedule. We'd like to go look at those detention ponds and maybe get those also. Um, they're on the south side of the city, I believe. And so we're working with him. That's kind of our model. If we have some extra and can do a little bit extra, let's go find something else. And detention ponds are just natural litter traps by how they're set up. So we're going to talk about that, uh, get finished of the first pass. We're installing the litter boom tomorrow. We've worked it out. Originally, we were going to put them above the cemetery lake, but it looks like we have two major drainage pipes coming into that lake. And we just call it the cemetery lake. I don't know if it has a a real name, I can't get a real name for it, but uh, what we decided to do is use our booms catching what's coming out of those pipes because we don't think it's coming from upstream. We think it's coming from the streets. So now with those two booms installed, um, we're kind of excited to see if we can actually catch a big, a large amount as it comes into that lake. So again, we're going to try it. If we need to move it, we'll move it, but that's the plan for tomorrow. Um, and COVID really kind of upset the apple cart when it came to meeting with schools and stuff and what we would like to do is co i mean we're still getting through the COVID situation at schools and they're not doing field trips but you know anything we can do whether it's a field trip working with kids talking you know with litter we're happy to do that and i think that might be something we have to push to next school year because i think everybody's just ready for this year to be over with you know from that standpoint so we feel pretty good we feel on track uh we've pat underwood's our crew chief and then Jack Marks, we had another another guy from Decatur's working with us. Jack's doing great. I can't find hip boots to fit him. He's, he's, he's mad about the hip boots. But um, they're doing great tomorrow because we're going to do a little extra work. We'll actually bring some of our team up from Birmingham, and they'll come and augment. So some days when we know we're going to have a big work day, we'll bring in some folks up here. And then we'll bring our guys from Decatur down there. Uh, we have work days in Birmingham. So we got full people in Birmingham. So I think that's about it. I know I kind of went – Fast, I know I hate, just hate to, you don't want to start a work session with somebody talking too much. But um, go to one more, let's see, I think that might be the end of it. Yeah, so just, we're happy to be here. Kudos to Decatur. I know we started under a different group, now it's moved to this group. Decatur is really our only client that's, well, our second, one of two clients that really do it themselves. You know, that a lot of folks are looking for grant funding. We've talked with that some up here, some things to pursue, but, um, you know, the vision that Decatur has protecting it, we think it's a neat part of it. So there's a lot of, um, for doing that on your own, that's, we're pretty proud to be working up here. So. Thanks, Don. Any questions for Don? I know recently we've had a bunch of rain and I've enjoyed watching Pat's uh, <laughs> videos. I mean, they're catching a bunch of- He's a bunch fire, y'all are lucky to, he's very passionate and uh, super smart and yeah. he's acrobatic. He can get litter in the craziest places, so, but, uh, but we're proud to be here. We thank y'all. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. All right. We will uh, move through the agenda and get any of our, our questions answered. Uh, first, we have a proclamation uh, from the mayor for National Public Safety Telecommuter, Telecommunicator Week. Anything there, Mayor? Any questions? Okay. Uh, announce I Heart Decatur contest winner. Um, Alan, or is Caroline on the... Yeah, she's moving forward with that. Okay. She's out this week, but I think she's going to be communicating with Okay. That was the contest with the color of books. And, okay. All right, next we have... A, uh, any questions on that? Sorry. Uh, next we have approval of minutes, March 8th, 2021, 5 p.m. work session. March 15th, 2021, 9.30 a.m. work session. 
City Council regular meeting March 15th, 2021, 10 a.m. City Council special called meeting March 22nd, 2021, 4 p.m. Any questions? Okay, next we have set public hearings. Ordinance number 21-4454, rezoning 1371-21 Deer Road and Upper River. Set public hearing for May 3rd, 2021 at 6 p.m. Matt? Yes, thank you. Uh, rezoning 1371-21 is approximately 28 acres. Currently zoned Ag 1. The applicant is QI McAdams for Adam Davidson. It's located west of, of Deer Road and south of Upper River Road. And the request is to change 28 acres from Ag 1 to R6 single family semi attached residential zoning. And that's it. Okay, and that's, those are townhomes? Yes, sir. Okay, any questions for Matt? <clears throat> All right, next we have resolution number 21 73 2816 Bunny Lane Southwest Demolition Resolution uh, set public hearing for May 3rd, 2021, 6 p.m. David? Yes, sir. These are just a couple that the owners have uh, not been responsive on, and uh, we can discuss them as much or as little as you would like today, but we can go over them in detail uh, the meeting before the public hearing if you'd like. Okay. Any questions on that one for David? The other one is resolution number 21-74-416 Bellmead Street Southwest demolition resolution public hearing for May 3rd, 2021, 6 p.m. Any questions on that one? Thanks, David. Thank you. All right, uh, next public hearings, ordinance number 21-4450, consent for use of city streets to Fanetta Arnold uh, Bog, doing business as Fab Quality Rides, first reading March 15th, 2021. Sal? Uh, I think, uh, how are you? He's here. Okay. There's no changes if you have any questions. Okay. Any questions? All right, resolution number 21-75, approve request for a special use permit from T-Mobile to modify existing power located at 47 <coughs> Thurston Park Road. Uh, Mr. Andrews? I'm, I'm here. I'm okay. uh, David Hammond with CMS. Okay. Uh, this is a, a request by uh, T-Mobile to uh, modify their existing equipment at 47 Thurston Park Road. They currently have uh, six antennas mounted on the tower and the and remove three of those antennas and add three new antennas. Um, they will also be adding some other uh, equipment to go along with that, some big lines and more remote radio units. Uh, T-Mobile will not be offering their, uh, they will not be offering their big lines at this time. But, uh, CMS has reviewed the application and recommended some approval by the Okay, thank you. Any questions? All right, the next one is resolution number 21-76, approve request for a special use permit for T-Mobile modification at 4216 uh, Highway 31 South. Uh, yes, again, this is a uh, request by T-Mobile uh, to modify their existing equipment, and uh, they, uh, they have nine antennas mounted on the tower. They're proposing to remove six of those antennas and uh, replace with three new antennas, so the antenna count will be uh, reduced from Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, resolution number 21-77, authorized mayor to execute um, Avenue Insights and Analytics <coughs> LLC audit agreement. Yeah, we tabled this, um, kind of gave Sal and I a little opportunity to review some. Yeah, just people can't hear. So we tabled this, I guess it was uh, probably a month ago. Uh, this gave Sal and I a little opportunity to review the contract and do some comparisons as we have two companies that do these audits for us. Um, in conclusion, while it's still recommended we, we go forward with them, um, we have a pretty hefty chunk of audits still outstanding with them. So we want to kind of keep that relationship going and um, 
We had questioned the ROI between the two, and it kind of leans in favor to the other. But I still don't know if they're going to have the capacity to handle doing all of our work. So this kind of keeps us safety, safety net, in, per se, between the two. But we'll start transitioning, pushing more work towards River Tree, which is the other company. OK. Any questions? Isn't that always going to be the case, though, so when we get to the end and we have to read it? do a contract that we're still going to have a lot of work with whatever company it is still out there. So we're we basing it on that um, because, you know, we're all, when we get to the end of the contract, at the end of this one, we're still going to have a lot of work out there that they haven't done. So. Right. That, I guess that's just one of my reason it, reasons for this. If you look at the statistics from the amount that's being collected by the companies and what we, the city, physically get in return, we receive more money from Rivertree than we are with Avenue. Now, I don't know if that's production or whatnot. It's just what I receive from reports. So that's why when Sal and I looked at it, we thought, hey, it makes more sense for us to try to position ourselves with the work with Rivertree because we're getting a better deal on it. But I don't want to sit here and say, let's get rid of Avenue and push everything to Rivertree, and then they start turning us down because they can't keep up with our demands. So. The, it doesn't hurt us by having Avenue on contract because they don't charge us unless we send them work. I mean, I realize that, that it's, it's based on what they recall. So, okay. And I can give, send you the statistics that kind of show the comparison of the two of, of what I'm getting at from a ROI standpoint. But if the return on investment is, is greater with the other company, mm -hmm. Cal, you know, for us to continue, uh, and I'm not suggesting we turn them loose, but for us to continue moving in that direction because they've got a ton of work out there, they're always going to be in that situation. That's going to be perpetual. So, uh, anyway, okay, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it later. This is only a one-year agreement, so. Okay. All right, any other questions? Thanks, Kyle. All right, next we have resolution number 21-78. Uh, authorize mayor to sign the A-TRIP 2 letter agreement for intersection improvements on uh, SR67 at Sandlin Road and Central Parkway. Carl? Yes, my Council. Uh, this is just a letter agreement to do the turn lane uh, improvements uh, that we applied for A-TRIP 2, two through the state. State's doing all the engineering, no bid the project, and Everything goes through them, but this is just an agreement saying that if it goes over the grand amount, the city will pick up the tax for the rest of it. Okay, any questions? All right, thanks, Carl. Resolution number 21-79, authorize mayor to execute agreement with Garber Engineering for the Aldop project on Church Street. Yeah, this is uh, selecting Garber to do the engineering for the NPO project uh, for the Church Street improvements. And we have to have the resolution to get it to the state before the engineering can get started. Okay, any questions? All right, resolution number 21 80 authorize the mayor to sign DU agreement for Fire Station 5 aid to construction. Yes, Mayor Kevin, I believe this is the. Uh, Aid to construction for the uh, moving of the electrical pole and attaching power to the new fire station there at Motors and Danville Road. Uh, I believe, and Kyle can, I guess, chime in on this. I believe this is coming out of, or being asked for out of unassigned fund balances. Uh, so it needs to happen to move forward with the fire station. Okay, Kyle's coming to talk to us. <laughs> I know we had discussed in our finance committee meeting how we wanted to tackle additional spends for the fire station five. I think it makes a lot of sense to wait till we get closer to the end of the project and come with a comprehensive, hey, here's how much extra we need instead of coming to council every single time that we have additional spend. Now I can keep everyone up to date with these additional spends, but it's, it's kind of preference of the council and how they want to go about tackling the project as a whole. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you can kind of keep us up to date mm -hmm. on that, but we allocate a certain amount of money. Correct. The project. Um, Carl, is is this the, moving the polls $15,000? Yes. 
Is that kind of what you would expect for that? Uh, it, it varies with the liquor depending on what's on the pole and visiting and, and what they're needing to add and the type of pole it is. Um, I, I've seen the range from 10000 to twenty or $25,000 just depending on the pole and what all has to be moved. Okay. Any other questions on this one? Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Carl. Resolution number 21-81, approval of amendment to Tyler Agreement to provide for custom interface. Brad. This is a um, fairly standard type of amendment we have. We have the overall contract with Tyler when we initially bought software from them. Same time we add or uh, module or add a custom interface like this, it requires an amendment with an additional signature. This particular amendment is for an interface for the CAD, you know, CAD 911 just updated their CAD software, and this would be the interface for us to pull data from them into our police records management system. Um, and we have enough money for this, so it's basically just you know, approval. Any questions? Thanks, Brad. All right, next is resolution number 21-82. Uh, airport coronavirus relief grant program grant agreement approval. Herman, is that you? Uh, All right. He's a mayor of the mayor, I just don't think. All right. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Basically, the airport is owned by four entities. That Athens, Limestone County, Morgan County, and Decatur. And as a sponsor or one of the owners, uh, this grant would allow them, and they can go retroactive. Uh, to, it's for uh, COVID-19 uh, sanitary and cleaning facilities, airplane areas, hangars, and it's $23,000 is what the grant's for. It has to be spent precisely for that purpose. And they can show, uh, invoices where they paid before uh, and uh, that's what it does is it just grants twenty three thousand dollars for them to, to do clean up and sanitary type of things to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Okay thanks Herman. Yes thank you. <clears throat> Any questions? Resolution number 21-83 approve sky pond slide repairs. Jason? Hey council mayor this is this is an additional repair needed for the sky pond slide at Point Mallard Water Park in the amount of $63,400. Okay, uh, any questions for Stephanie? This is additional to what we already approved, is that right? Yes, sir. This is additional amount. Um, this is to um, remove and remove place some additional wet pouring on that slide that they were not aware would be an issue to the other repair. Um, also, this would also carry a five-year warranty on this slide. Okay. All right, any questions? All right, next we have approved Bubba's Marine Construction LLC to repair Ingalls Dock in the amount of $42,400. Jason. Yeah, uh, hey, good, good afternoon, Council, uh, Council President Mayor. Uh, this is uh, money that will repair uh, one side of the dock at Angles that is, uh, uh, we've had trouble with. We, we, right now we have it secured um, with uh, uh, pretty much uh, come on to keep it in place. This would get it where it was uh, back like it, it needs to be sturdy. Uh, the funding source for this is, is coming from hospitality, so it will not need to come out of the general fund. I, I do want to thank them for uh, you know allowing us to use those monies to do that, along with other jobs that we were able to use uh, those for last year. They've been a great partner, uh, especially you know out of Eagles. Many other things, and uh, we want to uh, pass along uh, their their partnership and their help with this project uh, and with the funding.
what we accomplished. Right. Thanks, Jason. Any questions? All right, resolution number 21-85, appointment to city clerk vacancy, Stephanie Simon. Rochelle? Uh, yes, this is a resolution brought forward to, uh, based on the council's preference, waive the requirement to post the position in the interest of succession of an internally experienced candidate who already lives within the city, and to appoint Ms. Simon as a salary noted in the resolution. She is agreeable to that and ready to get started when the council formally appoints her. Okay, thanks, Rochelle. Any questions? I don't know. Are we sure she has enough experience? <laughs> That's uh, Carlton. Y'all didn't catch that. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. McMaster. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, uh, resolution number 21-86, approval of Allied Universal Security Services Agreement. Is this police or, or Herman? No, Thank you, Council, President, Mayor, Captain Ward, Decatur Police Department. What we're asking for is approval of a, an agreement to enter into Allied Security, Allied Universal Security Services to replace the uh, security guards that we currently have out here through A to Z temporary employees. The uh, Allied Universal is trained. They don't have a problem providing the personnel that are needed every day and they do an extensive background check. Where A to Z has problem keeping up with the demand that we have to place people with the city in this position. Okay. Captain Ward, wasn't there a licensing issue as well? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Allied is a licensed security agency where A to Z is not. Okay. Any questions? Is the cost similar? I mean, is it? Do we know that? The money that we have comes out of corrections, and eighty thousand is allotted per year. The quote or the estimate that was given is seventy-nine thousand dollars. Okay. So it's in line with what we. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. It. All right. Ordinances first reading, ordinance number 21-4455, amend code of Decatur, Alabama, chapter 22, section 22-33.1 to include 2nd Avenue Northeast as a 20 mile per hour zone. That's correct. It's, they already seen the sign that reminds you to slow down. The flag to tell you what speed you're going. Uh, this order, all we, all we do is the code section is adding, this would be from uh, 2nd Avenue from Lee to Gordon Drive, is what it's doing. Basically, the area from Arts Center all the way to Gordon Drive. And, okay. uh, uh, if you look at the proposed ordinance, there's, there's actually three subsections. The other two are already in place. This only adds this third one. But when you, when you amend a code section, you have to spell out the entire code section. So that's what that does, okay? But it's going to be 20 miles an hour right here to Gordon Drive. Okay. Any thank questions? You. Thank you. Thanks, Herman. Ordinance number 21-4456, declare surplus and sale of 731 Sykes Street Northwest. Alan. Yes, Mayor Council. Uh, CJ Matt Enterprises has just uh, requested the purchase of this property, so we're just asking uh, to declare the surplus and sell this to. What's the intent for that? Billy, they made their initial conversation. They had those with 
with David. I don't know if David's still on the line or not, but I think it's to build a house. Is that is David? Are you still on the line? It may not be. I'll, I'll double and check that and let you know. Set out a timeline as to what we expect and uh, yes, as far sir. as them starting to build. So I would like to make sure yeah. that that. I'll have that before the yeah. I'll have that before the meeting. Bill, thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Alan. Next, we have a point Wayne Thrasher to the Library Board, uh, District Two, term beginning July first, twenty twenty one, and ending June thirtieth, twenty twenty five. Uh, this is to replace Sherry Paler, who's rolling off the board, um, and typically the Library Board likes to do that by district. So this is a District Two replacement. Um, any questions there, on Mr. Thrasher? I think Wayne will do a good job serving the Library Board. All right, um, Matt, I think we, did you want to discuss one more that didn't get on the agenda? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. This is a vacation 529-21. It's 0 0.03 acres. It's in an R3 zone. The applicant is Key Wright McAnally for Scott and Beth Belcher. It's located at 4214 and 4215 Ruby Point Road, Southeast. And the request to vacate a 15 foot DET easement between lots 7 and 8 of Crown Point Edition 4. And I'll take any questions if you have any. Any questions from us? <clears throat> and I know we, we're, you're trying to get paperwork, I know you guys were short handed over there, so. We'll, we'll get it on the agenda yeah. for next week. Okay. I really appreciate everybody working with you, especially <clears throat> Stephanie Thomas. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. Thanks, Stephanie. All right. Um, next regular uh, council meeting is next week, um, April 5th. The next regular work session will be on April 12th, 2021 at 5 p.m. And then the next mid council meeting after that will be April 19th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Uh, anything from directors? Hi, yes, this is Bruce Child. Just wanted to follow up with the director of development candidate pool. I did receive the uh, recommendations by the requested date. Looks like we have five candidates that we um, the council has expressed an interest in interviewing. I spoke with Sarah, her executive recruiter. She does also recommend that if there are five candidates that you know you should spend the time visiting with all five. Uh, we need to set a date for those public interviews. Uh, we also recommend, given the nature of this position and the partners that they will interact with within the community, that we identify an opportunity, an informal social opportunity for those external partners to meet the candidates as well. And I will come forward with more information on that. But I was hoping for tonight if we could set a date for the public interviews and um, Friday, April 16th, might be a good day or uh, the candidates that are not from the area could then take the weekend to explore the area. So I'll just look to the council to help me identify that date, please. Does April 16th work? Or for me? Connor. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Jackson. I have a preference. Uh, Mr. McMaster's April 16th. Yeah, works for me. Hey, Rochelle, I think we can try to make that work if that works for the candidates. <coughs> Okay, I'll let Sarah know and she'll reach out. Okay. Thank you, Rochelle. Herman, did you have something? Yeah, facial mask. Yeah, we'll get to that. All right, that's good. Okay. Um, anything else from directors? Mayor? Okay, um, anything from council? Uh, so Herman mentioned, I think we need to, uh, the, the governor has indicated that she will uh, end the, the current mandate uh, for mass wearing on April 9th. Um, and we have a local ordinance uh, that would then go into effect. Right now it's superseded by the state mandate, um, but once that's gone, the, the local ordinance would go into effect. You know, I think we need to uh, consider how we need to move forward with that since the state is making the decision to do away with it. Um, and, and have possibly something to discuss next week. Um, so I'll take any recommendations if we want to have something on the agenda. 
possibly next week to discuss. Well, I recommend that we uh, we move forward with uh, either getting rid of it or making it to where you don't forcefully have to wear a, a facial covering wherever you go. When this uh, mask ordinance was put in place, you know, I've only been alive for 19 years, and I thought it was the biggest thing I've ever seen when it comes to government overreach in my entire life. I believe that it's one of the biggest things that states ever done when it comes to government overreach, and I believe that this is government overreach. So I would hope to gain support in getting rid of the mask mandate, the mask ordinance here indicator. Okay, thanks. Mr. Pepper. Um, is, I think I think we need, to, we have citizens that are asking kind of how we're going <clears> to <throat> proceed. I think we need to at least have a discussion about repealing it. Kind of my thought was we take the state's lead, um, Dr. Harris, Governor Ivey, um, you know, if they, if they decide to get rid of it, we follow that lead. Um, but there's really no way to tie that to the current ordinance we have. We really just need to repeal it if that's what we're going to do. If she decides to, to, decides to extend it, ours would still be superseded um, either way, whether we you know, have it or not. So um, any other thoughts there? Yeah, the language that was put in the ordinance was to take guidance from the state when we adopted it. I think that uh, we need to keep the mask um, ordinance in place. I think that we need to um, continue to implement what we have. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. And um, I think that we can make a move too soon. It's my personal opinion. Uh, we're starting to get uh, numbers up as far as vaccinations go. But I think that uh, we still have to follow guidelines that are going to keep us safe until uh, we're in a safer position. Okay, any other thoughts? I'll support following the lead of the state, uh, the governor, and Dr. Scott Harris. Okay. Um, I, I think if I would like to see us have a discussion uh, next week on repealing the mask mandate. Um, so I get to put that on the agenda. All right. Anything else from council? All right, that's it. Thank you.